spirit and flesh. Spirit and flesh. Animals have flesh. Angels are spirits. Neither are together. We're the only ones. Even God didn't experience being a human until Jesus. Isn't that weird? You are a unique creature in all of the universe. The only one with spirit and flesh. That is your identity. And it comes from God and God alone. This is the cosmic view, uh, the, the really big picture view of his creation story. Uh, he's going to give us a little more of a close-up view next. so much. I want to go through this a little faster. Uh, did, did you want to do your question? Yeah, I was wondering if you could just repeat that thing about uh, just very quickly just to kind of uh, emphasize about the spirit and flesh and animals and humans. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, uh, humans are unique in the world. We are the only created being. In the, in the universe uh, with both spirit and flesh. How many of you like movies? Only half of you? Come on. Love movies. Yeah. How many of you like alien movies? Yeah, you're all ashamed, aren't you? You know, you do. Yeah. Aliens always are bigger, smarter, have more technology, they're more awesome, right? <laughs> we always get really lucky right in the end and that's how we win. 
แล้วก็เราประมาณว่าโชคดีตอนสุดท้ายของหนังแล้วก็นั่นคือเราชนะใช่ไหมนั่นคือสิ่งที่เราชนะ Non biblical worldview ไม่ใช่มุมมองของพระคัมภีร์ไม่ใช่โลกกระทัดของพระคัมภีร์ค่ะ Even if there are aliens ถึงแม้มันอาจจะมีมนุษย์ต่างดาวจริงๆ Humans are the only created beings with both spirit and flesh. Created in the image of God. They'd be like animals. It's not a. Think about. It. Well, allow these things to really penetrate into where your mind goes. You are extremely valuable. We part of this is part of the reason. So he creates a, a man. A man, a male, yes. His name is Adam. Now, Adam's job is a guard. He's a gardener. He places God places him in a garden, and he says, "Till and till soil." Till, till the soil, work the soil. He says, "Tame the garden." Make it pretty. And so Adam starts to do his job. Now, obviously, this is about time because within about a day he gets bored after he's named all of the animals and gets into trouble because God says it's not good for man to be alone. Being a little cheap. Okay. But it, Adam, that's Adam's function. In the Hebrew language, there's a word play happening here. Listen to the sound in English. Adam, Adam is created for Adama. Adam, Adam, Adama. Adam, Adam the, the Hebrew word for, for the, the ground, tillable soil, is Adama. So Adam is created for Adama. It's harmony. They work together. But there's a problem. It says uh, it is not good for man to be alone. So it says uh, in English, let, let us create for him a helper as his partner. What does it say in Thai? That those words help her as his partner. What would be a literal translation of that? Supporter. Oh, that's bad. I'm going to give you a Hebrew lesson here. That was given to me by uh, one of the translators of English Bibles. Very well respected scholar. 
He's a very well respected scholar. Alright, so you're going to learn Hebrew right now. Everyone repeat after me. Ezer. 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 Ki. Ki. Neg. Neg. Do. Do. Ezer Kinegdo. Ezer Kinegdo. Alright, Ezer Kinegdo. You all learned Hebrew now. The word Ezer is where we get the word helper. We think wrong about this word. Hello Kitty. Helper is we we think wrong about helper. I have a nephew. My sister's little boy. His name is Zachary. She was Zachary. Uh, he just learned to ride a bicycle. And that's all he does. If Zachary were to wreck his bicycle, if he wrecked his bicycle, and maybe the chain fell off, and he would need someone to help him put the chain back on. Because he's five. Right? He's little. So he needs a helper who's bigger, who's older. He needed help from someone that was stronger than him. One time I was hiking in a forest. I saw a big hole. Maybe the size of all these desks in a, row, uh, in a circle. And I saw a vine near, near the hole. And I, and I decided to swing across the hole. And the vine broke. <laughs> and I fell in the hole. Uh, it was as high as the ceiling. And the, the dirt came up to my waist. It, it was very soft or I would have been hurt badly. But I was stuck. I couldn't climb out. I needed someone from above who could reach down with a rope and pull me out. I, I needed a helper. See, a helper is superior. That's one way of looking at it. In fact, when the word Ezra gets translated later in the Bible, it gets translated as the Spirit of the Lord or the help of the Lord. It's a superior help. So if we only had the word Ezer here, it, women would be superior to men. Now there are other kinds of helpers. 
And this is the way we look at it. This is the way the world does. Women are just the little helper. Making me my sandwich in the morning. <laughs> Doing my laundry. All the other things that are stupid that people relegate women to. Go, go, you know, get me a beer while I watch the sports. Rub my feet, I'm tired. Go take care of the babies, I don't want to deal with it. This is about my calling. I'm the head of this household. You're the woman and you're to submit to your husband for he is the, head, the ruler over you. I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man. Women have to wear head coverings in church. Only when they pray and prophesy. Because they're just a little helper. I'm doing the real work. She's behind me helping me. That smells like smoke, friends. And if that's the way your man treats you, if you're married, you pray to the Lord your God that he'll change his heart. If you're not married yet, you hit the road. Don't let, don't let the door hit you where the dog should have been. <laughs> Does that translate? Yes. Because it means in the butt. <laughs> that is the result of the sin and the fall. The word kinegdo is attached to the word helper. The word kinegdo is attached to the word ezer. Sorry, Ezra and Kinecto. Okay, Ezra and Kinecto. They go together. Uh, it means, actually, you guys invented what it means. It's same, same, but different. I think everyone I've ever met has that t shirt. <laughs> that, come, that has come to Thailand anyway. <laughs> I know I want to get that shirt so I can teach, I can use it as a teaching. Uh, do you guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Literally everyone has that shirt that comes back from Thailand. I just assumed it was it. It says same, same on the front. Oh. It says different on the back. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea what the context is, but I want the shirt. That's what Ezra Connecto means. Equal co-worker. We may have different functions, but neither of us are superior to one another. Male and female, he created them in his image. He told them to rule and reign over everything, not each other. So ladies, stand up. 
Stand up. Stand up. This is what we need from you. We need you to be queens. We need you to carry yourself like a queen. With dignity. Knowing that you are the most valuable being on the earth. Just like all the other women. And you need to see yourselves like that. You need to see each other like that. And you need to see your brothers like that. Okay? You are not called to just go around making sandwiches for some dude. <laughs> you were created in and to bear the image of God. To, to expand Eden wherever you go. You were knitted in your mother's womb and called before birth by the God who created the heavens and the earth. You have specific gifts and strengths and passions that are from the Lord. You are not to hide that. Stand proud. This is who I am. And I will be obedient to the Lord. Alright, men, you need to look at these women and think the same thing about them. Maybe you need to make them a sandwich every once in a while. <laughs> or some rice. All right, men, you need to stand up, ladies. You can have a seat. All right. We need to look at each other with this same lens. Hey, mom. We look at women sometimes and we think, oh, yeah, I need to find a wife. So she can help me do whatever I want. That's, that's a satanic lie from the pit of hell. We need to be saying, I need uh, to find a a queen to rule and reign with me. Someone whose calling I can respect. Someone who respects my calling. So that we can serve the Lord together. Not so she can just help me serve the Lord. Right? And we need to stop looking at each other. Sit down, guys. Men, men and women, we need to stop looking at each other. Um, and thinking about value. We look at uh, value in terms of passport. Skin color. Height. Body fat. How many languages someone speaks? Whether someone is a prophet or evangelist. Whether they're a preacher or a cook. Whether they clean the toilet or leave the school. 
ไม่ว่าเขาจะเป็นผู้ทำความสะอาดห้องน้ำหรือว่าคนที่เป็นผู้นำโรงเรียน Those are all sinful, sinful, sinful. Do you want to know how we got that way? Because the way God created uh, Eden, His original intention for humanity, was that we would be like this, ruling and reigning over everything together. Only under one thing. This was the original intent. And I'm just going to give it away right now. This is his final intent also. The rest of the Bible talks about how God is bringing us back to his original intent. What he began in the garden, he will restore in the New Jerusalem. Over all the earth. He said this to these people. I'm giving you a place to stay. I'm giving you your identity and your function. You're, gonna, you're kings and queens over the earth. But I'm still your king. He said, I've given you this garden and you can have everything in it. All the fruit, all of the vegetables, anything the garden grows, it's yours to eat. And all you have to do is if, if you don't like this arrangement, arrangement, if you don't like this, if you want out, if you want out, if you don't want to uh, have me over you anymore, if you want to rule over each other, or be ruled over by each other, here's how you get out. Now I'm going to put a tree right in the middle of the garden. And, and you're supposed to be expanding the garden, so are you going to be on the edges or in the middle? Everybody always says, why did he put the tree in the middle? Because they're supposed to be at the edge. He wanted it as far away from them as possible. And what happens? They're having a picnic where? Underneath this tree that they're not supposed to eat its fruit from. And it says that Eve, he, she, you know, she's sitting there hanging out, you know, getting a suntan. Adam's probably taking a nap. Is it a joke? 
And this snake walks up because they had legs back then. <laughs> only, only two of them, though. And he says, hey, uh, if you eat that uh, fruit right there, we'll be like God. Think about that for a minute. What did the enemy say? He said, did God really say you can't have that fruit? He said, well, actually, God doesn't want you to eat that because he knows you're not going to die. When you eat it, you'll, you'll actually become like him. God just wants to keep you down. This is the strategy of the enemy. He'll question the words of God. He'll question the motives of God. He'll lie and manipulate you. Now, we all know what happened, right? Eve got out the whiteboard. Eve got out the whiteboard. And she said, sit down, snake. I'm going to do my job and have dominion over you. I'm going to speak the truth over your life. And I, I'm going to disciple you in the ways of God. What if she would have done that which God called her to in the beginning? What if she would have had dominion over the snake? One of the primary ways the enemy wins is when we don't walk out our calling. And for you to walk out your calling, it requires you to trust God and know his word. And if you don't have those two things, what's going to happen to you is the same thing that happened to Eve. The fruit from this tree was called the, the knowledge of good and evil. He said, if you eat this tree, you'll be like God. Now, what do you, does anyone see the problem with that statement? Anyone? Anyone see the problem with that? Who were they like? Who were they like? Who were they like? God. They were already like God. They did it they, they got ripped off. They didn't even get anything good. Uh, what happened there was, they, uh, of course, Eve took the fruit. She said, oh, it looks good to eat. And she took a bite and she ate of it. And she handed it to Adam who was with her. They were together. 
แปลว่าเขาอยู่ด้วยกัน It wasn't like Eve was there all by herself ไม่ใช่ว่าเอวาอยู่ตรงนั้นแค่คนเดียว And we get to blame the women for everything bad because they're the ones who listen to the devil เราก็กลายเป็นว่าเราโทษผู้หญิงในทุกๆอย่างเพราะว่าผู้หญิงตอนนั้นเป็นผู้ที่ฟังฟังเสียงของมาร์ตัน Adam was right there with her laying down on the job แต่ว่าอาดัมเป็นผู้ที่ถูกแล้วเราก็ Not walking in his calling Not being obedient to the Lord. And in that, the enemy got dominion over them. In that moment, the world turned upside down. When we listen to the enemy, we are walking upside down. That's the way of the world right now. It's twisted. It's upside down. It is different than the way of God. The Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve with Adam and Eve in it they have all of the elements of a covenant. Just like Moses bringing the people out of uh, Egypt and uh, giving them the law, with, with all the stipulations, with all of the stipulations or the rules, uh, Adam and Eve had one stipulation. All they had to do to show loyalty to their great king was just that one thing. And in that moment, they broke covenant. Covenant is going to be the way and means by which God restores humanity. When, when we come back, we're going to look at the consequence of sin and God's response to sin. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Before we go to break, can everyone open your Bibles to the last verse of chapter 2 in Genesis? And I want everyone to just read it out loud at the same time. Read it out loud at the same time. One, two, three, go. Okay. It's actually extremely important. So when we come back, we'll, we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about sex and covenant, and we'll talk about sin and God's response to sin. So when we come back, we'll talk about sex and covenant, and we'll talk about sin and God's response to sin. So when we come back, we'll talk about sex and covenant, and we'll talk about sin and God's response to sin. Okay, so it's in a, in a covenant where there's a, a great king and lesser kings. The lesser king just had one major goal. Uh, and it was to show loyalty to the great king. But loyalty has to be shown somehow. 
I can't just say I'm loyal to you. And then hit you. <laughs> they don't match. The action has to match the word. And so in these covenants, they would write specific actions. Uh, and they say this is how you show loyalty. It wasn't about the, stip the action. It was about the loyalty. The action just showed the loyalty. That's the same thing in Eden. God is the great king. Adam and Eve are the lesser kings. They could have all of the fruit and all of the earth. They could even have access to the tree of life. Their bodies were created to live eternally eating that fruit of that tree. And all they had to do to break covenant was to show disloyalty. By disobeying the one action that showed loyalty. And that's what they did. And they broke covenant with God. Okay.
says that God came to meet with them for their quiet time or their one on one. And he walks uh, walks in the garden, he's like, yeah, hey, where are you guys at? Now, I'm just gonna say that when the God of the universe says, where are you? It's a pretty good invitation, or a pretty good indication you're lost. You see, there, we talk about reaching the lost. The people who are hidden from God. And they said, we're, we're over here. Hiding behind the bush. And he said, what are you doing? Yeah, they said, well, we saw that we were naked and we were what? From sinless to sin. They go from unashamed to full of shame. Sin, sin wrecks our hearts. Because it makes us feel ashamed. God says, wow, what happened? You say, well, or Adam said, I was just, you know, I was, I was doing my job. Uh, and uh, my helper, she, she hid some of this fruit in my sandwich. I wasn't looking. Uh, she, you know, I was in a hurry. You know, I, I just, uh, she packed my lunch today like a woman should. She, she snuck it in there, Lord. It wasn't my fault. He said, well, Eve. She said, well, it wasn't my fault. Well, I was down at the grocery and uh, the checkout stake said that it was something else. I didn't even know what was happening. Uh, I got a headache this week. I, you know, my eyes hurt. I've been trying to read my Bible on my iPad. <laughs> okay, so maybe I've added a little to the story. <laughs> but the point is, they blame each other. Instead of replying and saying, we, we sinned, they blamed each other. Oh, man. Good thing we don't do that, right? You know what I'm saying? Well, that's not my fault. My roommate was supposed to wake me up this morning. You've been late every single day since I've known you. Notice God's response. Uh, I want you guys to read this. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell it to you, but you're supposed to be noble learners. So I expect you to go back and read chapter three at least. Because we're talking about the guy who just invented earth and heaven. And the people that he gave that to just said this. <laughs> and 
สิ่งเหล่านี้กับพวกเขาเพิ่งจะทำในสิ่งที่ทำอยู่เมื่อกี้ใช่ไหม Or in Australia t h i s this หรือว่าในภาษาออสเตรเลียก็เป็นแบบนี้ They gave him the finger and they said we're going to do whatever we want เราให้ให้นิ้วไปแล้วแล้วก็บอกกับพระองค์ว่าเราจะทำอะไรที่เราอยากทำก็ได้ I think if I were God, I would do this. ถ้าผมผมคิดอย่างนี้ถ้าผมเป็นพระเจ้าผมจะทำแบบนี้ You know what I'm saying? จบชีวิตเลยใช่ไหม But God says, man. แต่พระเจ้าบอกว่า First of all, I'm going to curse you, you stupid snake. ก็อันแรกเลยเราจะแช่งไอ้ตัวเนี้ย Zap! Now you don't have any legs. Slither around on your belly. Look at chapter 3 verse 15. Circle, underline, highlight, glitter, neon lights, and a pop up. This is important. This is the This is the first declaration of the gospel. This is God's He says, "You, you, you snake. You, you don't get the victory. You may have bruised the heel today. But the offspring of this of a woman will crush your head." That's the good news. The enemy has been overcome. The enemy has been overcome. The offspring of a woman has conquered evil. Crushed the head of the snake. Do you want to learn a five-dollar word? This is the word scholars use. Evangelium. 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 Say it. Evangelium. You're all very, very educated. Well done. <laughs> it just means it's it's the first announcement of the gospel. God's immediate response to sin is to proclaim the gospel. Humanity's remediate response to sin is to cover their shame. We do not trust God. We are like Adam and Eve. And we will hide our shame. We will do anything to cover it up. Because we don't believe Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. If you believed it, this is what you would do. Every time you sin. And somebody says, oh, I said, oh, what are you sinning for? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm just struggling so much. Help me. I don't want to keep sinning. But here's what we do. I didn't sin. What are you talking about? Don't judge me. You don't know. You don't know my story. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know my culture. 
That wasn't me. I didn't eat your peanut butter. It's not my fault. I didn't leave the toilet paper roll empty. We don't own it. And we don't trust the gospel. God then turns uh, to Adam or Eve, I forget which one's first. He said, he said uh, Eve, you, uh, you're, you're, you were given the gift to be the mother of all humanity. Uh, I have a, I, I'm not a woman, as you can tell. <laughs> I, I, I will never be a mom, but I have a mom, and I have a grandma, and my, uh, my brother and my sister both have uh, children. So my grandma has great grandchildren. I thought my grandma loved me a lot. I'm her favorite. Don't tell anyone. And then the great grandchildren came along. She doesn't even notice me anymore. She loves those great grandbabies. From what I understand, she considers it an incredible gift to be the mother and the grandmother and the great grandmother. Imagine the honor given to Eve. To be the great great grandmother of all humanity. Part of her gifting and part of her calling. Let me ask you a question. Does God remove her gifting and her calling? You need to look in your Bibles right now and don't just guess. Does God remove her calling? as well. He was to be a gardener. Remember Adam and Adama? Working in harmony with the land? Part of his gifting and his calling. And now he's going to continue to eat the fruit uh, of the, the ground. But now instead of working in harmony with the land, it will work against him, producing thorns and thistles. Does Adam's sin remove his gifting and calling? Sin will make your life 
more difficult. Sin will make it difficult to walk out your calling. Sin will make it difficult to walk out your giftings. It will attack your identity. Make you afraid because of shame. These are the consequences of sin. They are not God's intention. They are not God's intention. And the other thing about sin, it wrecks your relationships. Watch what he says to Eve. Because your, your pain will increase during childbirth. He says your desire for your man he will use to rule over you. This is not God's judgment or curse on a woman. This is a consequence of sin. Sin doesn't just hurt our relationship with God. It hurts our relationships with each other. It's very natural for women to be attracted to men. And for women to be attracted to women. Except for some very awful uh, circumstances. Women, your your um, your attraction to men is very helpful for having babies. God says, oh, I wish you guys wouldn't have sinned. God said, I wish you wouldn't have sinned. Because now you guys are going to rip each other off. Your, your giftings and your callings are all perverted now. He's, men are going to use your desire that's good and healthy and beautiful to rule you. This is the way of Satan. It's not the way of God. God says, it says the Bible says God cursed the snake, not the people. He's, he's, he, this shows us that sin wrecks our lives. It wrecks our relationship with God. And it wrecks our relationships with each other. So don't sin. What happens next in the story? God says, you guys are terrible at making clothing. <laughs> and so he makes them some new clothes. <laughs> what did he make these clothes out of? <laughs> what was it? Okay, now how do you get the skin?
skin of an animal. Okay. Now, how can we kill it? You have to kill it, right? Yeah. So did did this animal? Would this animal have died if Adam and Eve wouldn't have sinned? So sin costs something its life. There's a sacrifice being provided. God is the one who covers their shame. All of our attempts as humans to cover our shame to cover our sin fail miserably. Fail miserably. Only God can cover your shame. The immediate response of God to Adam and Eve's rejection of him was to curse the snake to proclaim the gospel and to provide a sacrifice for sin. Immediate response. That's every single time. Every sacrifice you see in the Old Testament. It's all incomplete. Did this animal have as much value as a human? Why not? Doesn't have spirit. It's not, a, it's not an eternal being. It's not about that animal that day. Just like it's not about all the animals they're killing in, in, in Israel throughout the Old Testament. Those are all signposts pointing to the day when humans uh, got to witness their God, the great king of the covenant, laying down his life for humans. The God who said the consequence of sin will be death. Took the consequence himself. The creator of heavens and earth and light and darkness and male and female and animals and all of these things. The one who was before there was. Gave himself for you. You need to see the contrast of the creation and the cross together. When we read about Jesus, we need to think about Genesis. These two things aren't separate. We, we can't just talk about these different 
character attributes of God in isolation. We can talk about God as all powerful. And all knowing. And he's, un and he's uncreated. He's uncreated. And he is the creator. We can say all these words. And they, 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 they stay separate. But we really need to see how they connect. We, we need to see them in the story. We've spent three days and we've only got to Genesis 3. We're going to go through the whole rest of the Bible in the next two days. But I promise it's much faster. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about uh, a few more things uh, with a little bit of depth. We're going to look at three more covenants. We're going to review these covenants. We're going to, we're going to see Jesus. We're going to see how Jesus uh, connects to Genesis. And we're going to try to see what the Bible says is the fullness of God. But when the Bible says Jesus is the fullness of the glory of God, it's looking at the Old Testament when it says that. And if we really want to understand what that means. We need to be looking at the Old Testament too. Alright, so in the next two days we'll go much faster. We'll have more time to, to talk. So I'm expecting tomorrow and Friday that we're going to be talking more. That means you have to talk more. Okay. Uh, and I didn't get to finish what I was talking about, what I wanted to talk about with sex, so I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. But I'll just say it quickly. Uh, every covenant in, in, in the ancient world had something built into it that, that once the covenant was made, they would, they would have uh, certain times of the year built into the calendar that where they would remember the covenant. They, they would have celebrations to remember the covenant. Passover was one of those for the, old, for the people of Israel. It's, it's a celebration to remember the covenant that was made. That's what sex is for marriage. Sex is part of the celebratory act remembering the covenant. And so I'm going to explain that a little more tomorrow.
we're out of time. No, we're not. We go to one. I don't know. I'm, I'm lost. We go to one today. Yes. I'm, okay. I'm working on the schedule. It's getting in my head. Well, let's take some time for question and answer. So look back over some notes. Uh, we went through a, a lot today. I want to know, hey, what are your questions? Uh, and three, what are you seeing about God? I said in three, what are you seeing about God? I said A and then I said three, but not like B. That's just fun with the translator folks. Okay. What, what, what are the uh, character pieces that are sticking out in your mind about God? And do you have questions? So discuss it at your tables for two minutes. Go.